From MTN News, this is Face the State 2020 Vote, the race for superintendent of public instruction. Hello and welcome to a special edition of MTN's Face the State. I'm Jonathan Amberian in Helena. Over the next four Sundays, we'll be bringing you debates with the candidates running for four statewide offices that haven't received much attention this election season. Attorney General, State Auditor, Secretary of State, and State Superintendent of Public Instruction. This week, we'll begin by bringing you the two major party candidates running for Superintendent of Public Instruction. State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Elsie Arnson, was elected in 2016, the first Republican in that post in almost 30 years. She taught fifth and sixth grade in Billings for 23 years and was a state legislator for 12 years. She is a fourth generation Montanan, grew up in Billings, and has degrees from Montana State University and the University of Montana. She's been married for 44 years and has two daughters and four grandchildren. Melissa Romano is a public school teacher in Helena, a mother of four and proud union member. She has taught for over 15 years and received various accolades throughout her career. She was Montana's 2018 Teacher of the Year and received national recognition in 2012 as a recipient of the Presidential Award for Excellence in Mathematics and Science Teaching. When she's not teaching, she and her family enjoy hiking and camping on Montana's beautiful public lands. Thank you both for joining us. I will direct each question to one of the candidates. They will have 60 seconds to respond, and then the other candidate will have 30 seconds for a rebuttal. Earlier, we held a drawing to determine which candidate would receive the first question, and it will go to Elsie Arnson. Ms. Arnson, what has your office done to support school districts adjusting to the COVID-19 pandemic? And should students be in classrooms at this time? Jonathan, thank you for that. And this is on every, every family's mind right now. Number one that our office did was put together a learning course because teachers didn't know how to remotely learn and making sure that our instruction could continue. It was yes, the governor closed our schools, but learning continued. So professionally developing our teachers is exceedingly important. Then we brought over 100 Montana's voices to understand what flexibilities could happen with school closed. We made sure that this was very transparent and we're very, very proud of the experts at the OPI in transportation, in delivering precious nutrition, in making sure that we have an opportunity of supporting all of our schools because a mandate and one size fits all doesn't work in Montana. So with that, I'm very proud of our employees at the OPI and the leadership that I have brought to the table because of this very uncertain time. Thank you, Ms. Arnson. Ms. Romano, you have 30 seconds for a rebuttal. Thank you, Jonathan. I do wanna comment that and say that safety of our students and teachers is definitely number one. And that would be my priority as state superintendent. I certainly wouldn't be arguing about $75 million that the governor gave to schools or arguing or complaining about a mask mandate. This is the time where the state superintendent needs to show leadership and putting our students first means advocating for their safety. And that's what I would be doing as state superintendent. Thank you. The next question will go to Ms. Romano. If elected, what would you do to ensure that students are still getting the education they need while the pandemic is still with us? Thanks for the question, Jonathan. If elected, I would continue to do what I've been doing my entire career, and that's advocating for our students and teachers. I am proud to be Montana's 2018 Teacher of the Year, and I am gonna take that passion that I have in my classroom with me to the Office of Public Instruction and lead and continue to be an advocate. Our students need an advocate who's gonna show up at the legislature and advocate on their behalf. And as the top education official and who has the voice for educators and students in the state, that's what I would be doing. I certainly wouldn't be absent. It's concerning to me that Ms. Arnson has been absent from the legislature in her position as state superintendent. Our kids and families are counting on her, and it's really concerning to me that she's not there and advocating for our students, especially now when we need it the most. Thank you, Ms. Romano. Ms. Arnson, a rebuttal? Uh, yes, of course. These are untruths. And if that's a way that uh, wants to be going out there in a very negative way, 
I, the untruth, Montanans deserve the truth. So as a legislator of 12 years, knowing to be part of the body, knowing to make sure that as a champion of education, it's not about arguing with an executive branch that doesn't understand uh, the role of schools. It's about making sure that we have um, very clear directions for our schools. As I had shared before, one size does not fit all and mandates don't work. But having experts at the table, making sure that that uh, information flows to our school districts, and it is about health and safety you, of our students. Uh, thank you, Ms. Arnson. Uh, the next question will be to Ms. Arnson. You have been superintendent now for four years. What do you see as your major accomplishments during that time, and why should the voters of Montana reelect you for another term? Thank you. You know, I came into this role and for 30 years, it had been under one guidance, one leadership, and it was very bureaucratic, very heavy government. We've turned the ship. We've turned government to now be a servitude. In other words, we are serving our Montana students and we're making sure that there's great understanding of what government can do. And I'm very proud of our school safety initiative. I brought that in to the agency making sure that the legislature understands that school funding must occur. We put it on the governor's desk six weeks into this last legislative session because a promise is a promise to our Montana public schools. I've been a champion of public schools my entire life from my parents being teachers to myself and as well as the rest of my family. Thank you, Ms. Arnson. Ms. Romano, 30 second rebuttal. Thank you, yes. You know, I, I hear what Ms. Arnson is saying. And again, I want to just express my concern. I hear her saying that she has been at the table and that she's advocating for our students, but that's not what I've seen. And it's not what educators across Montana has seen. Uh, I think that it's also fair to point out at this point that educators know that Ms. Arnson is not advocating for them. To date, only one Montana public school teacher has contributed to her campaign. She's simply out of touch with what's happening in schools. Thank you. The next question is to Ms. Romano. You want Montana voters to replace the current superintendent. Why do you feel they should make that change and what would you do differently in the office? Yes, thanks, Jonathan. Uh, so first off, you know, the very first thing I'm going to do differently is I'm going to show up every day and work to protect and promote quality public education in our state. Every student in our state deserves a leader at the Office of Public Instruction, someone who's going to show up and advocate for them. So I will be very present at the legis legislature and I will be advocating for bills that would benefit Montana students. I will be opposing bills that are detrimental to Montana's public school system. One of the things that I am extremely passionate about is public preschool. And that's one of the things that I will be advocating for right from day one. Our, it's time that we invest in our young learners um, we know that when our young learners have public preschool opportunities, they're more likely to read on grade level, graduate high school on time, and make more money over their lifetime. And so that's something I'm going to advocate for on day one. It's time to invest in our young learners. Thank you. And a rebuttal, Ms. Arnson. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Again, Montana deserves the truth. Montana deserves to have that there are facts that are there and they need to be, they need to be shown uh, truthful when it comes to being realistic. My truck is the first in the OPI parking lot and it's the last one to leave. I'm a working 24 seven superintendent. Before the other ones, uh, it was very much bureaucracy. The other thing is making sure that we have realistic vision. Our state budget right now is, is in peril. We have people that are unemployed. So let's be realistic. And when we ask the legislature, all learning matters okay. across Thank our you. state. Thank you, Ms. Arnson. At this time, we are giving the candidates a chance to direct one question to their opponent. The first will be from Melissa Romano, to, uh, directed to Elsie Arnson. Thank you. Um, yes, Ms. Arnson, in 2016, uh, when we were running before, you ran on teacher recruitment and retention, saying that that was your number one priority. Yet to date, teacher recruitment and retention in Montana has reached critical levels. And I'm wondering why you let the state legislature end the loan forgiveness program that was critical to, in, to attracting teachers to our state. 
Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa, for that question. And again, let's let's discuss the facts here. The loan forgiveness program is very abundant and it's working. The challenge that we've had is there are multiple partners that are here in teacher retention and recruitment. So I'm making sure that the 120 teachers brand new that came out of our university system have an opportunity to get licensed and making sure that they are quality in front of our, uh, of our children, because our children, our students deserve the best. And I've put that forward after 23 years of being a teacher, being so passionate about the best, making sure that each student has that quality teacher in front of them. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Romano, you have uh, 30 seconds if you'd like to make a brief rebuttal. Thank you. Yes, I'd like to say that I'm just, uh, again, I'm worried and concerned and a little disappointed that you weren't present at the legislature to um, advocate for our students and our teachers about this loan forgiveness program. I want all children to have a quality educator at the front of the classroom. And the loan forgiveness program would have just done so much to attract and keep our teachers in the classroom. You can count on me as state superintendent to show up every day and be a true advocate for all Montanans. Thank you. Uh, at this time, uh, we would allow uh, Ms. Arnson to direct a question to Ms. Romano. Thank you, Jonathan. So our students and our parents expect positive examples of ethical leadership. And so during my time in the legislature and my past four years as state superintendent, I focus on a positive vision of putting our students first and supporting our families. However, you, Melissa, and your political allies have focused on political negative hits against me, full of hateful criticism and an untruthful agenda that is tearing down rather than building up a positive message. So Melissa, as a fellow teacher, why are you a schoolyard bully? Ms. Arnson, thank you for the question. I'm so sorry that you feel like that, but I do have to say facts are facts. And I have been disappointed watching you in the last three and a half years not step up to the table and be a leader, especially now when we need you to be a leader the most. You've been absent from critical conversations. You have voted against, um, when you were in the legislature, you voted against things that I just can't sit back and watch. And in your time as state superintendent, you're not showing up for kids, you're not advocating, and you're not leading. I am counting on a, a leader to actually step up for our kids. When I'm state superintendent, I can't wait to wake up every day and work to ensure every student in our schools has the resources they need to learn. That's the job of the state superintendent. It's far more than what you've made it, and I can't wait to step into this job. Thank you, Ms. Romano. Ms. Arnson, uh, rebuttal? Yes, again, we are talking about being a positive, having a positive vision. Uh, she seems to be more, and Melissa, you seem to be more of tearing down rather than building up. And I believe Montanans deserve more. This positive uh, action that I'm putting forward and have so from the day one I stepped into a classroom to now as a legislator and into my role now, it's important in a time of uncertainty in a pandemic that we have quality, that we have qualified leadership that will put that positive vision first. At this time, we'll return to our uh, normal questions uh, and we'll ask a question now of Ms. Arnson. Do you support the tax credit program that could go toward benefiting private religious schools that was recently upheld by the U.S. Supreme Court? And do you think this type of program should be expanded? Thank you, Jonathan. Um, I was a legislator when this first came in front of us, and the governor also had it go into law. So it was a very bipartisan discussion. Uh, when we were in the Capitol. I firmly believe in public school, but number one, I believe in our children. Uh, our children flow in and out of all systems across our state, from homeschool to public to private. And there shouldn't be a push me, pull me on our children. They are our treasures. So as far as I'm concerned, um, when it comes to the tax credit, we have many of those in our, in our law book. The highest court of the law spoke. It is something that is law at this point. And as far as I'm concerned, supporting our Montana students, wherever they might be, is my mission. Supporting public teachers, 
public schools is also a heartfelt mission of my own. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Romano, a rebuttal? Yes. Uh, I am really looking forward to putting the public back into the superintendent of public instruction. I support public money going to public schools and not being siphoned away from the very kids who need it the most. I'm looking forward to waking up again every day, working for all Montanans and ensuring that our public monies are going to public schools. And I'm so excited to be a true advocate. Thank you, Ms. Romano. The next question is to Ms. Romano. What can the state do to help the recruitment and retention of teachers, particularly in Montana's rural schools? Should teacher pay be increased? And if so, how? Thank you, Jonathan, for the question. Uh, so I have a couple different ideas when it comes to teacher recruitment and retention, and both of my ideas really center around being a true leader and an advocate. I think Montana has absolutely amazing and wonderful educators, and it is true that oftentimes our educators are isolated or alone simply because of uh, how big our state is. And so I'm really interested and committed to the conversation involving all stakeholders to tackle this issue. One of the things I'm interested in is uh, using our homegrown experts and creating a system to connect teachers to teachers. I'm very excited about that because we have such amazing educators in Montana and all of those amazing educators definitely deserve to be paid, uh, paid more and paid what they're worth. They're professionals and um, I'm gonna show up every day and advocate for them. So yeah, I would say mentoring programs is definitely a key that I'm interested in. Thank you. Ms. Arnson, a rebuttal? Um, just a, just a, a thank you. I appreciate that Melissa is looking at um, supporting teachers. There's an entire system of education, and this is our teacher leaders. Um, I do know that the entire system has to do with our school board members as well. So it's looking at the whole picture, not just as those uh, courageous teachers right now because of where we are in this time of uncertainty, but supporting teachers, supporting the entire system that comes from the legislature, give, making sure that that promise of those precious tax dollars flows equivalently to our schools. Thank but you. let's put everything but, onto our students. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ms. Arnson. Uh, the next question will be to Ms. Arnson. Do you want to see the state institute some form of public funding for preschool? If so, what form should that take? Thank you. Um, learning is learning and learning can happen when you're very young. And I know that there are studies that say that the early learning uh, occurs when you do come into kindergarten, into the most first formal part of school. So yes, it is exceedingly important that, that we bring these young learners in, but it's also embracing the family, embracing, embracing our very rural communities, because uh, it's not daycare, this is education. So we wanna be very careful with um, preschool, that it is education, but we don't wanna put too many constraints on it that might um, harm that forward thinking in learning. Thank you, Ms. Arnson. Ms. Romano? Thank you, Jonathan. Yes, I want to say that our budget should reflect our values. And I value Montana students and kids, and especially our young learners as a former kindergarten teacher myself. I know how important it is to reach and intervene early in a child's life. And public preschool, is it's absolutely time that we invest in public preschool and our young learners. We know that it will benefit long beyond when they're five and six, well into when they're adults. Thank you. Uh, the next question will be to Ms. Romano. If you're elected superintendent, as a member of the state land board, how will you balance development of state trust lands with recreation and other uses? Thanks, Jonathan. The seat on the land board is a seat I take very seriously. My, it's where the land, our public lands are where my family goes to hunt, recreate, spend time together, make memories. And the seat on the land board, I'm always going to approach that seat with two words in mind, and that's reasonable and responsible. I want to make sure that our public lands are around for future generations. So the same trails I'm enjoying with my kids, they can enjoy with their kids. 
I'm also going to be looking at it from a reasonable and responsible approach in terms of um, development. I want to make sure that our that we're maximizing revenue for our schools. But again, thinking long into the future, making sure that we're all able to access public lands, just like I do in the classroom when I advocate for all my students. That's what I'm going to be doing on the land board. I'm going to be advocating for all of us. These public lands belong to all of us, and I want all of us to enjoy them for as long as we can. Thank you, Ms. Romano. Ms. Arnson, a rebuttal? Yes, I just want to say that the number one uh, reason why the land board exists is to make sure that that delicate balance is there. But our state trust lands work for our public school children. And you need to have a business mind, uh, like myself with a degree in economics, to be able to balance that discussion of what we should come, what should be reaped off our state trust lands from timber and mineral, but also allow access. And it is a delicate balance. But number one, our, our responsibility, our constitutional responsibility is to make sure that the lands work for our public Thank schools you, and Einstein. our children. The next question will be to Ms. Arnson. Uh, as you alluded to earlier, the state could face budget shortfalls at the next legislative session. Should schools expect any cuts in state funding? And if not, where do you believe the money will come from? Thank you. This is a very serious question. And because we're in a pandemic now and we have uncertainty coming out of the governor's office on how schools should safely reopen, it's very challenging. If you don't have a relationship built with the legislature, and I have had one over 14 years now, making sure that their promise to fund our public schools does occur and making sure that uh, their stability is put back in to our school board rooms where they can fund our public school teachers, where they can give opportunities to our children. And I do know that Montana is not back to its full economy. And we need to make sure that those families are embraced. So adding extra tax burden at this time is not appropriate. And I do know that it's gonna be a very realistic ask of the legislature to embrace special education students, to make sure that all students have that opportunity to learn because some things happened because of COVID and I'm ready to lead that forward. Thank you, Ms. Arnson. Ms. Romano? Yes, thank you, Jonathan. I agree, it is a serious question. And again, I'm very worried and concerned. I hear Ms. Arnson talking about the importance of relationships with legislators. And so I'm, I'm really wondering why she wasn't there at the legislative sessions advocating for our students and our families. Montana needs and deserves a state superintendent who's going to show up and advocate on day one, especially at the legislature and when it comes to our kids and benefiting Montana schools. Thank you. We have time now for one more question and it will be to Melissa Romano. Ms. Romano, what steps could you take as superintendent to ensure that Montana high school students will graduate ready for colleges or careers? Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. This doesn't start in high school. This starts when our students are young. And so one of the first things I'm going to be doing is advocating for our young learners by and advocating for implementing public preschool in Montana. We know that when students are ready for kindergarten with a public preschool option, they're more likely to read on grade level, they're more likely to graduate high school on time, they're more ready to then go on, make more money over their lifetime, and, and live a productive and successful life. So that's number one what I'm gonna be advocating for. You can count on me no matter what, I'm gonna be advocating for programs, educational programs that benefit Montana students. That's what I've been doing my entire career as an accomplished educator. It's what I'm gonna to continue to do in the Office of Public Instruction. We need a leader at the Office of Public Instruction and I'm looking forward to restoring leadership to the office. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Romano, Ms. Arnson. Yes, Jonathan, we have an initiative that I began uh, four years ago and we're working through it into middle school. It's called Montana Ready. It's using those precious tax dollars, giving an opportunity as an investment to students moving forward. And this begins in middle school. You know, we can add a brand new cohort of students, but those other children are left behind. And let's, let's invest 
not only invest in our children, but let's have a more robust conversation with our private partners. Our private partners are our businesses across our state. That you, is Ms. where Lansing. our children are going to be employed at. Thank you. We will now give each candidate 90 seconds for a closing statement. Uh, once again, we held a drawing to determine who would go first. And the first statement will be by Melissa Romano. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, I wanna say thank you to MTN um, for the opportunity to be here and thank you for everyone watching and tuning in to hear about why this race is so important. I'm not a career politician. I am a mom, I'm a union member, and I'm a very proud public school teacher. Teaching isn't just a job to me, it's my life's work and my passion. And I'm running for state superintendent because I can think of no better job than waking up every day to advocate for our children. And I would be honored to have the chance to create a better future for all of our children in Montana. This is a critical time in our children's lives. And now more than ever, our students, our families, our teachers need support and they need a state superintendent who's gonna show up every day to be an advocate and a leader. As your next state superintendent, I will support families and invest in education programs that lift up our economy. I will invest in our teachers and ensure that they are able to return to classrooms safely. And I will stand by our state's constitution and ensure that every child has access to a quality education. We have a chance to create a better future for our amazing state. We can come out of this stronger and with our commitment um, to our children. Let's work together to restore leadership to the Office of Public Instruction and advocate for our children again. I ask for your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Romano. We will now have a closing statement from Ms. Arnson. Thank you. And this is a big shout out to Montana families um, who have supported me in the past. And as Elsie Arnson, your current superintendent of public instruction, it has been an honor of a lifetime to serve you. Uh, my parents were both public school teachers and I followed in their footsteps by spending 23 years in public school classrooms. Um, I've legislated where I have taught and my grandchildren now go to the same school that I also attended. This is who we are in Montana. Our Montana values are bright. And as a wife and a mother and a grandmother and a former teacher and a legislator, I thank you for the trust that you placed in me to lead our schools, not just through normal times, but in this unprecedented time. I humbly ask for your support once again, and together, together, we will continue to have a positive motive going forward, positive energy, putting our Montana students first, putting our teachers forward in leadership, and rejecting special interests that put politics above our children, and to ensure that our next generation is Montana ready. And I would appreciate your support in helping me putting our Montana students first. Blessings to you, and please all stay well. Thank you very much, Ms. Arnson. Thank you, Ms. Romano. Thank you both for joining us today. And thank you for watching this special edition of Face the State. Join us next Sunday when MTN chief political reporter Mike Dennison will have a debate with the candidates running for state auditor. Thank you very much. I'm Jonathan Amberian in Helena.